This is the Munil Mazrui Lifetime Achievement Award 2022. It's awarded to Professor Michele Mogo Gedai in recognition of your extraordinary and outstanding contribution towards the promotion and protection of human rights and your outstanding role in the struggle for freedom of expression, democracy, and advancement of human rights. Congratulations. <laughs> Touching. I am so, so deeply touched. I cannot tell you how touched I am because of the spirit of love and the spirit of comradeship and genuineness that I hear in your words. And she's the one who modeled, who taught, who insisted through her work that I do the work that I do as an academic, as an artist, and as an activist. She taught me to consistently work towards transcending those boundaries and to prioritize Utu in doing that. I want to thank you for this honor. I want to appreciate your presence, each and every one of you, and what you have done for this country. Truly, I mean it when I say you're all Shujas. Professor Mugo's work and life show that we cannot separate art, literature, and culture from the social economic conditions of a people because these are the expressions of their lived experience. Art and literature carry the hopes, dreams, successes, or failures of a society in all its spheres of life. She was, has been, has always uh, advocated for intellectual activism, you know, not just at the local level, but also at the international level, not just within our institutions, but also outside of the institutions, breaking uh, barriers and boundaries of intellectual curiosity. A friend of mine that I went to university with and who asked me, Michele, you mean you are still doing this thing? <laughs> so I said, what thing? He said, you should mellow. So I have not mellowed and you're encouraging me not to mellow because you are literally, as some of the speakers were saying, bringing up, you know, um, these moments of revival, rejuvenation, and empowerment to continue. When teaching at the University of Nairobi, she served as, the, as an acting chair of the Department of Literature between 1973 and 1979, and was elected as the first and only ever female dean of the then Faculty of Arts now the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, where I serve, um, from 1980 to 1982. This was no mean fate at the time when male domination was the norm. 40 years on, the Faculty of Arts, which would be presumed to be the base of radical and transformative ideas and practice, is yet to elect another woman as dean. But the most seminal is the struggle, very fierce, in terms of transformation of what was then English department into the department of literature. It, wa it wasn't a walk in the path because there, are so, there, there were forces, and then very strong as they still are strong, that were bent on keeping the minds of Kenyans that would pass through this conveyor belt called the university permanently colonized. I want to thank you for reviving the national ethos and the national psyche so we remember because it's so easy to erase the memory and to force people to forget. Thank you for resisting efforts by Kenyans reactionary clique of national leadership, whether in politics or mainstream academia or whatever, efforts to induce amnesia in the collective memory of our beloved country. I had seen, had, uh, experienced Michelle Mugo, especially through theater, it was in awe that people could dare a government that was so scary. 
and Michelle being that time the only woman who was visible, uh, I was like, wow, even women can do it. So for me, Michelle uh, embodied that courage. And the impact of that cannot be overestimated in terms of raising consciousness of then young minds like myself. I want to thank you for reviving revolutionary history. Revolution has become like a dirty word. You dare not say it. But let's say it again and again and be proud of it and not be intimidated by anyone who accuses of stirring trouble or whatever. If we say we have been so inspired by the life and times and works of Professor Michele Mugo, then we have to ask ourselves, how can we realize the dream? How can we see the change she's fought for this time? If we all, in all our corners, boast of being revolutionaries, but unable to build a revolutionary movement, uh, on the whole question of uh, Mwalimu building bridges between the intellectual space and the public space. Because she, she has been, I think, very consistent in terms of, of this, eh? um, refusing to be alienated by, the, uh, by her intellectual curiosity and taking it to the field. Thank you so much for rescuing history and her story from manipulation. Thank you for not becoming participants in your silencing, my silencing, and the silencing especially of the masses. Thank you for this revival. Thank you for breaking the cycle of negation, the negation of her story and history and crafting the negation of our people's negation. And here I'm referring to Césaire, the Martinican revolutionary writer and poet. And he said that the biggest task, the biggest mission that you and I have is to negate negation by our oppressors. That struggle of the women at Freedom Corner changed the trajectory of this country forever and ever and ever. Because the release of political prisoners, up to today, we do not officially have a political prisoner in this country. We do not officially have in our constitution the Public Order Act that detained people like uh, Dr. William Otunga and others. We do not have officially the seditious law that, uh, that got people like Odwolo Nguyen and others in prison. As somebody said, once we all get together collectively to do the work, even though imprisonment has become, political imprisonment has become less, if we were all to do it, do they have enough prisons to, put, to lock us in? What do we lose? We are breaking negative silence. And in my mother's poem and other songs, I differentiate between negative silence and positive silence. Negative silence is imposed upon us. You know, but uh, positive silence is something we choose to retreat, to take a break, to regroup, to meditate, and so forth. If you see her frame, she's petite, but the power that resonates from that petite person is a power that shatters. I am because you are. And since you are, therefore, I am. Please let us not forget that, comrades. That if the other person is not well or doing well, there is no point in our doing well. This is not an individual thing. This is a national project we need to engage in. And I want to congratulate you for engaging in this. Getting her to this position of receiving the award is lest we forget our heroes and you know she's one of those heroes we must never forget as a nation it even gives us more energy for picking and continuing with you but also seeing you as an instrument of wisdom 
to the movement. It was the idea of, 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 of basically getting somebody who has been consistent, all right, you know, over a long period of, uh, you know, of time, uh, everywhere. One of the defining um, uh, actions for Mwalimu is that she has been involved in struggles wherever she has been. Whether it is at the University of Nairobi, challenging the status quo, shaking it. Whether it is in Zimbabwe, shaking it in Zimbabwe. And I've seen her in action with the African-American struggles in the United States, shaking it. I think that the key thing is developing a sense of curiosity, a sense of asking the question, can things become better? And what can I do to make things better? Not just for myself, but for everybody else. That curiosity will show you what you can actually do. And I think that the stepping out to always learn, to always seek to become better, not for yourself, but for everybody else around you, is really, really critical. Because then you do not become geographically um, stagnated. You find space and you turn it around. You end up in prison, you take that space and ask the question, can things become better here? And you shake it right there. Lifetime award. I hope you live to be 80 like me uh, because this lifetime award comes at a moment where I'm really celebrating it and savoring it and um, especially when you see for outstanding work in advancing good governance, gender equality and human rights in Kenya and beyond. When I know how much all of you have done, I can only say Thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, um, in the Chishona, the women, Tinotenda, Majita Enyu, Majita Shukuru. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>